This DVD is intended to educate you on the health issues caused by indoor air pollution and the dangers of house dust mites. The Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, labels indoor air pollution as the number one health hazard in America. Out of all of the elements in our environment, the EPA says the air we breathe in our home is the worst thing for us. Unbelievable, but true. The bad news is, it all starts in our beds, where we spend nearly one-third of our lives. The good news is, there is a solution. Coming up, find out what we found in Janelle's bedroom that most of you have in yours. It's a creepy, crawly thing. What she has that most people also have. After testing your bed, uh, the lab found that you are living with millions of dust mites. Millions. Millions of the little critters. This is a picture of a dust mite like the one found in Janelle's mattress. Oh. Which God. is only oh, yeah. four years old. It has eight legs. And this is what the mites look like when they're moving. Take a look. Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh. Oh, gross. There you go. You're not oh, alone. A new piece of equipment called an environmental scanning electron microscope makes it possible to film for the first time house dust mites actually moving around in their microscopic landscape. They gorge themselves on flakes of human skin and on fungi, fungi that is nourished by our sweat. The house mites in turn provide food for giant cannibal mites. Stalking across the bed sheets, these killers grasp their prey with powerful claws and then suck them dry in less than a minute. Okay. Dr. Philip Tierno is head of the microbiology department at New York University Hospital. His book, The Secret Life of Germs. Okay, so how did these dust mites get? Most people have these though, right? Most people have dust mites, but usually they're there in low numbers. Dust mites live off the skin cells that you slough off. The average person sloughs off about a million and a half skin cells per hour during the course of the day. When you go on, lay on your pillow or in between your sheets and move around, you're sloughing off cells that can feed these dust mites. And so she has millions of them? She had a very high count. In fact, um, the highest. She had 14 times the recommended uh, uh, cutoff level. And that can subject you to allergic reactions, dermatitis, and a wheezing in your lungs. You can get respiratory problems. Asthma. I'm surprised you it. don't have. Y I yeah. do. You do? Yeah. I have a lot of breathing problems. Oh, you it's do? It's because all those little uh -huh. critters you're breathing well, in I there. didn't know that they were yeah. in there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. How do you get rid of dust mites? way to get rid of them is to vacuum, continuously vacuum in a very high setting, sucking up uh, your cells periodically. That will prevent the dust mites that are accumulated in your area from coming through uh, into your face and up your nostrils. There have been at least 11 outbreaks of the Norwalk virus. Tierno says germs can be terrifying. After all, they're behind major outbreaks that can sicken and kill thousands every year. So it's natural that most people, like the Moors, worry that they'll get sick catching something in the outside world and believe their home is a safe haven. But they are wrong, says Tierno. 50 to 80 percent of foodborne illnesses are contracted by items that are handled in the home. 60 percent to 65 percent of all colds are contracted in the home. In the home. In the home. The average home collects 40 pounds of dust per year. In addition, there are approximately 40,000 dust mites for every ounce of dust in your home. In every American home, no matter how clean and well scrubbed, there blows a constant blizzard of microscopic dust. About a million particles per cubic inch are constantly swirling around us. Enlarged 3,000 times, dust looks like this. But dust is made up of even smaller particles, such as pollen grains and minute fungus spores, as well as plant fibers, insect limbs, spider webs, flies' eyes, hair, lint, 
moth wings, ash, soot, and more than anything else, flakes of shed human skin. The vacuum is the largest contributor to house dust and actually pollutes your home. Dr. Norwood, professor of bacteriology and public health at MIT, states, the contents of a vacuum cleaner must be considered potentially dangerous. I vacuum probably every other day and I just change the vacuum bags when they're full. I think overall this is a pretty clean house. There you go. Overall, cute. Okay, Dr. Turner recommends that Gina change her vacuum cleaner bag more often. Why is that? There is an interesting uh, story about the vacuum cleaner. Housewife um, vacuuming her home, and each time she did, unknowingly, she infected her family with salmonella because she used that vacuum to clean up a, a food spill in the kitchen. And three consecutive weeks, she vacuumed in the presence of her family, and unfortunately, they got salmonella. Because it spread every time because she it spread from the bag. Dr. Norwood of MIT did a study on vacuum dirt and found that just one teaspoon of household dirt, as collected by a vacuum, contained as many as five million germs and dangerous bacteria. Cindy is a regular vacuumer. Looks like she's doing a pretty good job, right? Wrong, says Dr. Tierno. When I see this house, I say, this house is every bit as clean as my house, if not more clean. That rug, that carpet is vacuum. What is the reality through your eyes? Pierno says the proof was in the Petri dish. What I found is in the carpeting, very large quantities of fungal spores and extraordinary large numbers of debris and cellular matter, skin cells and uh, hairs, all of which can contribute to allergies and asthma. And considering the state of the bedroom carpet, the doctor was pretty sure he'd find a veritable party between the sheets, a dust mite party. Horror movies have thrived on our nightmares about being eaten alive. But there's one animal that's never made it onto the big screen. Yet it lives in our beds and eats more of us than any other creature on Earth. Say hello to the dust mite. It's so small that you can't see it without a microscope. It's lucky the mites are so tiny, since we spend a third of our lives in bed. That means we spend a third of our lives next to two million dust mites that can live in our mattresses. These eight-legged scavengers are number six in the countdown because every night they feast on our bodies. Dust mites eat our skin and each day we produce an incredible number of skin cells for them to eat. In the next five seconds, you will lose more than 4,000 skin cells. It's perfectly natural. It's part of your body's defense system for you to shed more than a million dead skin cells every hour. But it means that in just one day, the amount of skin shed by the world's human population would fill a four-story house. 80% of the dust you see floating in a sunbeam is actually flakes of dead skin. And this is food for the dust mites that live in your bed. Just like any animal, what goes in must come out. And what comes out of a dust mite is a pellet of digested skin. Each day, about 20 of these tiny pellets join the piles of dust mite carcasses and cast off skins that accumulate in your bed. So tonight, when you go to bed, take another look at your pillow. If it's more than a couple of years old, about 10% of its weight will be from dust mites and their droppings. We have a solution to all the issues addressed in this DVD. To find out how you can protect your family, 
contact us at 208-913-1023. That's 208-913-1023.